This presentation will teach you about a skill that occupational therapists use in their practice. It's the skill we hope you use in your volunteering to give your students the best experience possible. So, what is task analysis? This skill is used to break down the actions or series of actions that go into a task. Doing this allows us to understand the different factors influencing the task that either enhance or limit someone's ability to execute the activity. So what needs to be considered? We can look at what skills within the individual are needed to complete the task. This includes physical skills like muscle strength and endurance, range of motion or balance, cognitive skills such as awareness and the ability to process information, visual skills like depth perception or visual acuity, which is how sharp your vision is, and language skills, both interpreting and creating speech. So just starting with what's required of the individual, there are already a lot of factors, but there are influences outside of the person as well. These environmental factors can include the lighting in the environment, what sounds are present, and what task objects and people the person will be working with or around. Back to the individual, what is motivating the person to complete the task? This motivation can be influenced by social, cultural, and personal factors. Finally, what aspects of the task are easy and what is difficult? So the areas that are difficult help us look at what we can change about the task. Is something in the environment making things difficult, or does the person need to be taught the needed skills? Looking at what is easy about the task gives us information about the person's strengths, and we can see where we can use these strengths to compensate for any barriers that are happening. So, I know that seems like a lot of abstract information, but we're going to apply that information to a few examples to help make this idea a little more realistic. So first, grab a bottle of water or any beverage and place it in front of you. Now, before you take a drink, start thinking about all the different things that go into this task, which, without thinking about it, seems simple. With cognitive aspects, consider how you recognize that you're thirsty and that taking a drink will help this feeling. Then when you're drinking, you've got to make sure you pay, you're paying attention so you don't choke. Maybe it's just me, but I know when I'm stressed or super busy and I don't take a break when I'm grabbing my water, there's going to be water everywhere. With visual aspects, how easy is it for you to see the bottle? Imagine trying to grab the bottle when it's pitch black. Contrast is asking you to look at how difficult it is to see the object against the background. Are the objects in the background different colors? Moving on to physical aspects, think of all the muscles, large and small, that go into just reaching for the bottle. The muscles of your shoulder, arm, hand, and fingers have to work together to create that smooth movement, not to mention the work of your core to keep you upright when you're reaching. Think about the position of your body. Are you sitting or standing? The physical aspects of the object also come into play. Is the bottle material easy to grab? Is it full or almost empty? Does it have a lid, or do you have to be careful not to spill? Is there condensation on the outside that makes it slippery? Is it hot or cold? Finally, consider what's in the environment around you. Are you able to focus? Are there other people in the room that might distract you? So as you can see, what first seemed like a simple task actually has a lot of components to it. And many of us usually don't break our everyday tasks down like this, unless some aspect in any of these areas forces us to examine them. So with what you've learned about stroke in the earlier presentation, how might this task change for someone who's had a stroke? What aspects would you have to pay more attention to? This last example to drive this concept home is an adaptive cycling one. So a brand new student who acquired a spinal cord injury eight months ago is about to transfer from their wheelchair to an adaptive hand cycle for the first time. The student also suffered a mild brain injury along with their spinal cord injury. All right, some physical aspects to consider here. So this is a fairly recent spinal cord injury, so transferring to and from surfaces at different levels may not be something this person has done before. The firmness of the surface they're going to can make things trickier as well. Something to also consider is the level of their spinal cord injury. Do they have upper extremity function? How much trunk control is there for balance? An important thing to note here is, as always, before you step in, ask the student if they want assistance. And if so, how much you need to step in, because they're going to be their own best expert. If cognition or communication make it difficult for the student to understand or respond, you can ask the caregiver, but really make sure the student is included as well. With any cognitive aspects, considering they also sustained a brain injury, it's good to be aware if attention is affected. And if so, would they learn better in a different or modified environment? Is their understanding or production of speech affected? 
And regardless of cognition level, it's good to tailor instructions to the student's learning style. Do they prefer verbal instructions, demonstrations, or is it something they can just try out through trial and error? Considering the environment, you're outside, so if it's bright out, are they having to squint to see you? Would it be better to be turned away from any distractions? And considering it's their first adaptive cycling experience, they may need some extra instructions, so think about if they're in a space where they can hear you. And consider what's going to be easy and difficult here, especially with this being a recent injury and with this being their first adaptive cycling experience. How comfortable are they getting from their chair to the cycling seat? Do they have any previous experience with cycling? What do they know about pressure sores? Now, for you as a volunteer, if you don't know about pressure sores, I don't recommend doing any Googling if you're queasy, but in short, it's a really nasty situation with skin breakdown and damage. So things to look out for are making sure a student's clothes aren't bunched up anywhere, and just being aware that, thanks to our summers in Utah, it's going to be warm and people are going to be sweating, so that moisture can be a factor as well. People who have been living with spinal cord injuries know about pressure sores, but in a new activity and with more recent injuries, it's good to make sure you're both aware. So, I know that was a lot, and we don't expect you to go out being a pro at this. It's more to get you thinking about and understanding that any activity is impacted by a lot of different factors. Even a simple task, like taking a drink, has a lot of things that impact it, and the same activity will not look the same for two different people. We'd like you to recognize how the environment is either helping or is a barrier to the student, and act accordingly and use your knowledge of strategies to react to this, like moving to a less distracting environment. It's also about an awareness of physical, cognitive, visual, and language skills and deficits, and again, acting with your knowledge of strategies, like using gestures and demonstration for someone who may have difficulty understanding speech. Be aware that different people will have different goals and motivations. For cycling, someone may just want to get outside in nature and exercise for a bit, and someone else may want to really push themselves. So if there's only one thing you're able to take away from this, the reasoning behind teaching this information is the hope that you'll use these skills and knowledge of strategies to be more confident in assisting your students, which helps them have a more effective, efficient, and overall better experience, which will hopefully lead to more function and independence in their activity. So if you're feeling like you're going to have more skills and less worry, the students you're working with are probably going to feel better too. Thanks for listening and learning, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to any one of us. Thanks.